Hi everyone, I'm Yuno from Chaos and in this tutorial we are going to focus on a few different ways we can use user data with V-Ray for Cinema 4D. We will cover several different methods of creating user data, accessing it afterwards in the shader node tree and finally creating a preset system with customization options. With all that said, let's get started. For our first use case, let's see how we can access the data coming from a typical MoGraph setup. I have a cloner object that uses the random and push apart effectors to simply scatter a few Lego pieces. We need a way to colorize our clones, and although I can use the random effector for that too, I prefer to have a dedicated one for that. It just keeps things easier to manage that way. Let me add a shader effector and change its color mode from effector color to field color. This way we will have a greater control and an easier time randomizing the final result. Now I need to add a field, and since I want a random distribution, the random field would be perfect. By default, only the values will be randomized, so we need to activate the color mode as well. Let me get a step further, and change the color mode to gradient from the remap tab. Now if I choose a gradient from the preset ones, we can pick the colors we want to include. And using the seed value, we could go through different variations and pick the one we like the most. With the setup done, we need a way to translate it into the shader. I'll create a new node material and assign it to the cloner object. In the new Vray node material, I'll simply do a search for user. And since we want to access the colors from the cloner object, I will add a user color node. Even if I connect the node to the diffuse color input, nothing much will change. Every user data node needs an input to look for. We could either type in a custom one, which we'll do a bit later on in the video, or we can choose one from the predefined selection. In my case, I want to access a MoGraph data that happens to be a color. And that's it. Now we have the randomized colors from our shader effector in the very material. Something else I would like to show you is that we could reuse the same color data for a different purpose in the shader. So let me quickly create a few nodes, connect them and I'll explain the idea behind that setup. Here we have a luminance node that converts the color data so we can use it in a ramp. This is the exact same setup if you are to use a colorizer texture in a classic layered material. Now we can use the gradient and for example set our glossiness values with it. This way we add an additional level of randomness using the same information coming from our user color node. Alright, let's now take a look at an example where we actually need to create our own user data. When we create the user data, we need to look out for the exact name, since that would be the information the node is going to look for. And of course, we need to choose the appropriate type. In this case, I need a color chooser. And let me just change the default value so it's something easier to spot. For this material, I would like to have quick access to the color of the class, so let me add a user color node. With an empty user attribute field, the node is not doing anything, and since we have a custom data to look for, this time I need to type it in. Now I need to connect it to the fog color, and just like that, if I select my brick mesh, I can change the color of the glass without dealing with the material at all. Let's now take a look at a slightly more advanced use case. I will need a numerical user data with whole numbers only. So a float type in real units and let's have just 5. Let me also create a simple note material just to illustrate the bare bones of the idea and then we'll see how to implement it in a real-world use case. 
Now I need 5 color nodes. Let me also give them some different color values. And add a multi sub node. Once all the color nodes are connected to the multi sub texture, I will quickly give them unique IDs. And now we want a randomized use of the colors that is based on the user data I created. For that, I need to switch the mode from composite seed to ID generator texture. That would be our user data. This time, we need a user integer node. Since it also represents whole numbers only, as our setup in the user data earlier. Once more, make sure to type in your custom user data name inside the user attribute field. Now, if I connect the user integer node as a switch ID texture, our basic setup is complete. With this setup, I have a preset of 5 different looks, which I could change instantly by selecting the no group containing all of the meshes, without opening the material at all. The reason we used a number as a user data input, and not another color picker, is that this way we can swap the color nodes in our setup and use textures instead. Let me now open up the material I have prepared earlier using this exact setup. The only difference is that it has textures as inputs instead of the basic colors I used to illustrate the idea behind the setup. You can also see that we are basically reusing the same idea three times and driving information into the color, the roughness and the normal map slots using our very material. If I now switch between versions, you will notice the change in the whole appearance of the material. Ok, let's add one more thing. With the group selected, I will add two more user data inputs. One color chooser and one numerical type. Once again, make sure to name them properly since we will need those exact names. Inside the node graph, I will need a mix node, user color, and user color node. If I connect the multi sub node from the diffuse group as a color one source, I can then have the user color node as a second input. Let me just make sure that I have the proper custom user attribute typed in. I need to do the same for the user's color node. And then I can connect it as a mix map input. And by doing that, we have effectively created a custom tint color with its own opacity slider. Alright, in this video, we went over the process of creating and implementing custom user data for our shading. We started with a simple MoGraph use case and how we can access the data coming from our clones. After that, we took a look at creating our own custom user data of different types and how we can use it to drive different parts of the appearance of our material. I hope you found this tutorial useful and helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics you would like us to cover, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and we will see you in the next one.